All right, what's up guys? It's Andrew with Long Range Gear. Uh, we're already back at it with another 4500 teardown. Uh, this is actually another one from Oregon. Uh, and I think there's gonna be some carnage inside, so we figured we'd film this one as well. So we're gonna get started here. Uh, I already broke loose most of the tail housing bolts, but I haven't taken it off yet. You know, just in case it ends up being a struggle. Oh, wasn't quite expecting it that early. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah, see here in the tail housing. This is actually a cast iron housing already, which is good. Um, but yeah, we've got some got some issues with this gear here. Uh, we're going to set this aside. We'll reuse this tail housing. Dang. Um, yeah, it certainly does explain why the output shaft was locked. Yeah, so fifth gear, fifth gear on a 4500, that can be a problem. <laughs> well, all right, so we're already into it. Uh, the, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find a tool here. The uh, MB4500 is plagued with fifth gear issues, unfortunately. And, um, sorry everybody. Um, the MV4500 is plagued with fifth gear issues. Normally it's this nut coming loose um, and then fifth gear actually falling off the shaft. Uh, this one looks to have had, it's been rebuilt at some point. This is an aftermarket shaft. Uh, you can tell by some of the stamping. Um, but as you can see, it is a pretty small gear. So, you know, even when everything's secured there like that one is, it's still at a pretty severe disadvantage, especially when guys are throwing, you know, 1,200 foot pounds of air through these things. You know, we can we've we've got we've got them living at that range, but you know, I think you're kind of flirting with the line. Um, you're well past the factory line, like what they designate as <laughs> the uh, the upper limit. So always keep that in mind but we can make them last they don't always uh don't always seem to make it oh. yeah this one got warm too it also smells terrible so we got the input shaft seems to have made it out Synchros look fairly new, actually. Uh, let's see, third gear right here seems to look okay. That one normally blows up pretty quick. Second gear. Second gear always seems to get a lot of tooth wear on the engagement side, but not up here. And this is first. The reason I'm checking um, these more so than I do on other teardowns is simply because, you know, like all these chunks that are over here this has been circulating through the case for some unknown amount of time and if you cycle it between the counter shaft and here you can break other teeth it looks to me like this you made it out okay reverse seems all right as well oh. uh, so the counter shaft is terrible <laughs> you can you can hear it um okay so let's get this let's get this bell housing in these uh, these good OEM bell housings are getting really hard to find. So if you have one, take good care of it. Um, I told this gentleman if he sent it with his transmission, I would happily refinish it for him, which I always do. We're gonna do the parts washer, paint it up really nice. We'll polish this and. Put a new pivot ball in every single one. This is pretty grimy. The, uh, the top cover, besides looking really stained, it actually looks okay. At least initially. Okay, now let's see what we gotta do to get, get this nut off. Let's do the bottom first. Get everything out of the way. 
So this um, this newer counter shaft style uses two snap rings. These are far superior to the single lock ring. Um, and you just stagger the open ends. And they seem to hold as long as your counter shaft's in good shape. So despite all the carnage, this guy seemed to make it out okay. Brass synchronizers. You know what you do with these? Right into the trash. I hate them. Carbon fiber only. Which is the common, you know, that's what everybody uses for um, in the rebuild kits now. Well, I gotta grab a pump shoe real quick. Um, there's one. Don't worry, we'll just edit this section out. Fork roll pins, got those guys out. Slipped oh. off pretty easy. Mm, we're probably going to replace this fork. It's not bad, you could run it, but you could feel it with your fingernail, so we'll replace it. They're really cheap. Your, ooh, this slider caught some carnage, as you can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of the gear teeth breakage got in here and started wiping some of these. Especially like right in here. Yeah, that's definitely gonna have to get replaced. <clears throat> so, looks like this washer's really far offset. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be this bad. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Good carnage. But hopefully, looks like looks like the counter shaft itself is okay. We'll take we'll obviously take a much better look at that. So now we're gonna lock it into gear. There, we're gonna try to. Well, I guess we're gonna have to try to remove these. <clears throat> if this will even fit that this this one got smashed by gear gear fragments I don't know if we'll be able to get that one out not that they really do much anyway but it's just kind of hard to get the tool over them yeah all right two gears okay let's see if we can get our tool over this if we can we'll just power through it yeah, it's gonna be tough. Let's see what's going on. So for these, when I'm tightening them, um, I got this nice steel table, it's very heavy, and on the end I got a piece of angle iron on the bottom half. A piece of angle iron that's hanging off the bottom is, is really heavy duty stuff. And it's a heavy duty like table in general. Um, so it's, it's really sturdy. And what I do is I'll put a metal piece of strapping from one of these holes, sorry, from the tail housing to that, um, uh, to that hole in the angle iron. And so I can torque it really, 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 you know, 300 or whatever plus. Um, and it'll hold really steady. <clears throat> but for taking them off, for taking these nuts off, especially if they're used and old, um, you can simply lock it in two gears and just get like a typical fifth gear nut tool and just smack it with a, a heavy hammer like this and it'll come right off. Um, sometimes not, like um, very rarely when I have to get back into one that I've built, it's, it's normally like a three person job. Uh, so if it's a fresh install and done correctly, it can be a super huge pain in the butt. Never ending main shaft threads. So far I'm optimistic that that's been the only 
damage so far. So it is a full spline main shaft. It's an older, older installation. You can tell by all the rust inside. Um, <clears throat> I replace every single fifth gear on every build that I do, as well as the main shaft. So there's a nice tight fitment. And so there's no wobbling. Um, this obviously there's a lot of clearance. So um, rust got inside that anywhere you see rust that's actually on, you know, or this, uh, this varnish that's like glued to the surface. That obviously means there's not metal to metal contact. <clears throat> it's part of the reason why we insist on putting a new shaft and a new nut. Uh, I'm sorry, and a new gear and a new nut on every single one. So. I just broke my end. <laughs> God, we're off to a great start on this one, aren't we? <laughs> Uh, okay, well, give me a sec. That was a new anvil, too. What the hell, man? I'm hard on stuff, apparently. So this is a... Stock inch and a quarter input um, for typical dodge application. Oh, that stuff is glued on there. She's in there good. transmission smells awful but it's not like a smell that I've encountered really it's almost kind of sweet like a vinegary um, so this the sealant used in here this is anaerobic sealant I typically don't use anaerobic um, on NV 4500s I typically use it for 5600s but you could tell uh, this stuff is fantastic for gluing stuff together. This is a aftermarket input shaft. It's a stock size. Yeah, it looks good. Probably reuse that. Unless the customer wants an upgrade, I'll have to double check his invoice. Red synchros look almost new. Um, I don't know how many. I don't know how many miles are on this build. Obviously, there's some. Um, but the synchros look really nice. I mean, as nice as brass synchros can get. Again, straight to the trash. So there's a little indentation there. Generally, this looks okay, though. Probably reuse that one. Okay, so now we're going to do our typical thing. Oh, there's still oh, metal. Oh, man. <laughs> That's funny. I don't know if they could hear that on the video, but that was bad. Yeah. So this, so these are Timken bearings, at least. So that's good. Come on. Come on. Let's see if we can get this bearing moving. I doubt it. It kind of looks like it's glued on. Usually it's kind of a tight fit on these full spline mains. It's not like that to happen. Sometimes when that's a real big pain, you can loosen the counter shift. It 
that one just won't come loose. Remove the plate, the synchro, remove the bearing. And sometimes that gives you just a little bit of wiggle room. Get these out. Sometimes not. So what another thing you can do? Um, I had a pry bar somewhere. Oh, here it is, underneath my thing. Sometimes you can. I'm yeah, trying, trying to keep you in the shot. Sometimes you can pry them loose, sometimes you can't. Come on, you busy. Pull the counter shaft back. It doesn't agree with you. Sometimes you can put a little lift on the counter shaft and push the bottom out of the pocket. That's what I'm trying to do, but I don't know if that's going to work. one of our less smooth teardowns, but that's okay. This one just don't want to come out. He's kind of hurt at that time. All right. This thing really don't want to budge. We'll pan out and watch you struggle. <laughs> Fine by me. So, oh. oh, I thought it was going. These. So right, what, what happens is your counter shaft is sitting here and one of the gears is resting on top of the surface on the counter shaft. <clears throat> and not being able to remove this bearing really makes it a pain. Um, you might need to let me struggle for a minute using some bigger, more aggressive tools and then turn it back on. Okay. Are you on? Yeah. Okay. Literally as soon as we hit the button, it came loose. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I'm a professional. Boom. Okay. After that little fight, let's uh, try and make some room here. Um, let's see. How do I do this before? We're going to move everything over this way. Okay, so we're going to go to this end first, since I knocked some of these keyways loose from moving it. So this is the 3-4 slider. This is an aftermarket unit. Looks very nice, actually. Mm, a little bit of wear on this side. Still very serviceable, nice and sharp. We'll, we'll probably end up reusing that. So to get this off, and for the bottom, what we're gonna have to do is turn over to our trusty press, which are wonderful OTC 1126, to remove this side. Um, this is a very expensive little bearing splitter, and I use it constantly. It's such a useful tool. Okay, coming on over. size or 
proper height and everything. <laughs> over. Move the bearing, everything else, minus that little plastic spacer, will probably stay in place. So now since we have uh, this bearing that's affixed there, it almost looks like it's got some sort of stuff on it. Like a retaining compound or something. So that means we're going to have to press reverse off. And we'll simply uh, get this flange between the slider and the gear. Just like this, almost. up so you really don't like for something that's got this much purchase over the bearing splitter you don't need to tighten up both sides like unless you need a clamp force on it this just needs to be underneath so I'm gonna loosely tighten this one side that'll be enough cool and then we're gonna take it down one will do it. This has been fun already. So we got the reverse bearing that was pressed on there real good. Another Timken. Either they used the new Timken kit, I'm not entirely sure. Or uh, reuse the old bearings. So here's our reverse gear. This is a synchronized new style. It's newer because it's smaller. The old style is a lot bigger. So we check our thrust surfaces which look great all the teeth look okay we like it now here's the rounded reverse washer nice and smooth not grooved we're going to reuse that here's the third gear and 3-4 hub so our 3-4 hub nice and smooth no grooves yeah we'll reuse that one especially with this slider being in decent shape. It's third gear here, it's an OEM. There's some, we'll, uh, we'll replace this one. As you can see, I don't know if it's picking it up very well in camera, but even though it's relatively sharp, the teeth are kind of angled from wear. So, as much as I hate to throw out an OEM, we will replace this one. And get rid of our wonderful tool. 
And as you can see, another brass synchronizer. I'm gonna round file that one. Reverse wash or uh, reverse needle bearing. Um, where is? I thought I had to record it. I knew I had a scribe. We get under a little spacer, and these little spacers are replaced with your small parts kit. Every time you say scribe, I'm such a nerd. I think of like someone who writes, you know, like in yeah. olden times. There's not a whole lot of academia going on out here, Becky Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Another synchro is going bye bye. So now this this slider will typically remain on the reverse gear, but because we had to use the press and push it all off, uh, it, 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 came out, oops, it came out separate. But we'll have a look see at it. Looks pretty nice. We'll probably reuse that one. It's only sharp on one side because um, fifth and reverse sliders only move one way. So now we have my arch nemesis, the, uh, the big reverse clutch cone snap ring. This time it recognized my authority. Yeah. Would have recognized. Yeah. I normally use like a pair of pliers to hold the other side. Keeps it from twisting. Okay. Reverse clutch cone looks okay. Uh, we'll probably reuse this. It's nice and sharp still. It'll, I mean, you can tell it's got some, got some use, but it's sharp enough that it would still equate to a good shift. We'll use that. Remove first gear. Check the thrust surface. Looks beautiful. Ooh, the teeth. Man, these teeth are awesome. Almost looks like it was a new gear at some point. I guess it was a new at some point. But... I wasn't going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you were just holding back your jokes. I could feel it. My wife, everybody, she's the smart one here. Okay, we're gonna remove our um, big snap ring. Maybe we're going to remove the big snap ring. We might remove the big snap ring. There we go. So we can take out our synchronizer assembly here. So this is the inner. Um, so this is an aftermarket synchronizer. Uh, looks to be in okay shape. Thank God it's not brass. Um, obviously we replace all those. This the these surfaces look to be okay. Um, when we go to reassemble these, we'll obviously pre-soak our um, new synchronizers and the fluid we're going to use. But then we'll take a red Scotch Bright pad and put a crosshatch on both the inner synchronizer and the outer synchronizer. Kind of helps it, you know, break in a little bit, so to speak wear into each other. Um, it, I've noticed it helps that cut down the, uh, you know, the initially sometimes when you rebuild these, they can be a little bit stiff or clunky or something like that. And it'll, it'll reduce that time frame quite a bit. It'll be smooth instantly. So I'm guessing these springs weren't um, replaced when this was rebuilt because those were really floppy. Uh, as I said before, we replace all of them. You really should. It, it really helps your transmissions shift feel. Um, this one's got some grooving in it. Uh, we'll see how it cleans up once it's through the parts washer. And uh, after we scuff it up a little bit, we'll make the determination if we're keeping or throwing. Um, the, uh, the slider here looks really good, really sharp. That'll be a nice one-two shift. Oh, there's a synchronizer. Same stupid one as the other one. It's a little plastic spacer. You can save those if you want. They do come in your new small parts kit. Your new small parts kits, they'll actually be metal, which is kind of nice. I really like that. Come on. So much quiet in here. Quieter in here without the fan running. It's almost kind of eerie. The door's closed, so smoky out. Yeah, there's a lot of fires in the area. Looks like fog outside. So this is a third 
um, thrust washer, real smooth, real good. We'll reuse it. I'm gonna grab our anti-rotation pin there. And second gear. Second gear is beautiful. Really like it. I mean, it's got a little bit of wear, but it's, um, this will equate to a really nice shift. And the thrust surfaces look okay. Um, and then we got our lone inner synchronizer up here still. And just as before, it's a little cloudy, but we'll, uh, we'll clean it up. So then this is the old full spline main shaft. Um, even though this is already a full spline main, um, I replace everyone. I just, I'm, I'm not going to reuse this. These, these splines already have some wear on them. Um, no matter how long they've been in it. Oops, I didn't remove a needle bearing, my bad. There's a one, two needle bearing. Obviously we'll replace those as well. Um, but yeah, so the shafts, when they, when they get ran with the fifth gear, um, the, the splines are just, you know, wearing on each other with a little bit of wobbling. So I, I just replace every single one of them every time, no matter what. And we just don't have any problems. Okay, so now uh, the last thing we're going to do is pull out this counter shaft. And you need some sort of a spacer underneath. Um, I thought I had mine nearby, but apparently it's in the drawer here. So my favorite is a G56 bearing tool. It's nice, nice and thick. You just set it on top of that bearing pocket right there. Yep, just like that. And it'll space it up, and then you find the right collar to use. It's this one, and I need my heavy duty big bad nano jam here. Okay. This is not the smoothest teardown I've ever had. That's okay. Makes for good TV. That was on level two. <laughs> yeah, we were on there good. Okay, so now that that bearing's removed. Um, we'll lift out the, uh, the reverse idler pin and then the reverse idler gear. And again, as I've mentioned before, this is the new style with a single bearing, much narrower gear. And then your two little, um, plastic thrust washers. Those come new in your small parts kit. Now with that bearing removed, you can slide this puppy out. Now, here's going to be the real test. Because we had metal, and you can, yeah, see, look in there. <laughs> oh, jeez. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Is there enough light? Mm -hmm. so, oh, sorry. This is all just chunks of fifth gears. It's not supposed to look like that. Um, no, we, we generally, uh, most of the time, we like to send them out without metal chunks of gear in the bottom yeah so this is this is all the missing pieces from you know this gear and then this gear right so when you hear guys like oh i lost third i just kept driving um it's especially stupid because all this is floating around in there and this is just an oil bath um like an oiling system. It's just an oil bat. It's slung everywhere by these gears that are in constant mesh. All of the gears are always spinning. So it's always throwing oil around. Well, if it picks up just something about the dynamics at the time allows one of these pieces to pick up and get sandwiched between this, you know, this kind of a setup right here, you, there's, there's nothing good that can happen, right? I mean, you're going to break gears. You might even break the case because you can separate and we'll have to check this one really good because 
you know, obviously between those two gears, a piece of metal went through trying to push them apart. Um, so you might see some cracks anywhere around any of these holes. Um, this one, I mean, normally it's kind of obvious, right? But I'm not necessarily seeing anything initially. This is obviously really gross. Uh, so we'll get it in the parts washer. We'll scrub it down. Um, I like to roll lock um, this surface and the front surface and the top and then the PTO cover stuff. That'll give us a really good chance to um, examine that. And then we're gonna, obviously going to send all these parts through the parts washer, but you really want to examine your counter shaft really good just to make sure that no metal got stuck in here or, you know, like might have somehow twisted up like this and jammed, you know. It looks to me like it made it. I'm not seeing any kinks or nicks or anything. And it looks like the end over here is still smooth. Right? I don't... I think she might have survived. Um, obviously, the parts washer will tell the final story. Again, this is a... Uh, this is a good bare surface. You can see when you break stuff just how much it screws this up. You want to come on in here, Becky? So, see all these? This is all, um, it's supposed to be a nice machined surface, right? But you can see this is all from that metal getting circulated and stuck behind the gear. Here's some, like that one's still got like, like a gouge on it. <laughs> and then, you know, up here there's another one, just little chunks, right? I mean, I think this one seemed to survive. You know, sometimes you'll see cracking between here, or this way, or a lot of times up and out, especially in this path right here, because there's two holes and it's kind of small. You just got to check it really good. <clears throat> pull your PTO covers, uh, pull out your plug, and then you can... Um, you know, if you're doing this at home, you can pressure wash it. I'll send it through my parts washer. It'll get uh, primered, painted, clear coated. Um, and all this, you know, same for the tail housing. Everything will get really nicely cleaned. We wire wheel every single thread, uh, every single bolt that goes into this transmission. Um, new bearings, synchronizer seals, small parts kit. Uh, and just a few little things it looks like. And this guy will be back on the road. Uh, Long Range Gear, uh, visit us on Instagram at Long Range Gear. Our website is www.lrgdiesel.com. Uh, we also have a Facebook. I never post on there. And uh, you can call us on the shop, the shop line at 509-499-0760. Thanks, guys.